today you're going to learn about something called positioning inside HTML and CSS. And when it comes to positioning, it's essentially a way for us to move around content inside our page. We did already talk about something called Flexbox in this course here, but it is different than Flexbox because what Flexbox essentially does is that it takes the natural flow of the content inside your page and just tells it how to flow in a different direction. So next to each other or with a gap between each other or, you know, however the content needs to flow inside the website. Whereas when it comes to using positioning, we are taking a little bit more of a hard control over the elements inside the page, which is also why positioning is something that we need to be aware of how it actually works inside the website. Because if you use positioning wrong, then you could end up with a website that doesn't really behave the way it should when it comes to, for example, scaling down to mobile devices or something like that. So it's very important that you know how to use positioning and what the different positioning stylings are. So what I'm going to do here is I have a very basic example of a new HTML page that I created. It's inside the same project. I just created a test.html and a test.css. And basically, I'm just going to have a fresh page here just to sort of demonstrate to you how exactly our positioning works inside the website. Then afterwards, we're going to go into our previous website where we actually did already create a navigation bar at the top. And then we're going to add some positioning to this navigation bar because it is a very typical thing to have a navigation uh, with a positioning added to it so we can actually change how it needs to be inside the browser because if I were to scroll down my page, my navigation is going to disappear at the top of the website. And we don't want that to happen. So using positioning, we can actually fix that. But with that said, I already have this little test page. And inside my test page, I just simply went into my CSS and I made the background dark so we don't you know, get our eyes blown out when we look at this. And I also created a blue box. Now, I did also create another box inside my body page, which is a container. And the container is something that I will be using just you know, after a couple of examples, we'll get to use this one to sort of demonstrate positioning in action. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead and focus on this box here that I created, which is just basically a div container that has a little bit of styling inside of it. So if we were to go in here, you can see that I just have a width and a height and a background color. And that's pretty much all we have inside uh, the styling for this box here. So what I wanna do right now is at the moment, you can see the box is at the top part of the website. And what I could actually do here just to sort of demonstrate the flow of the website is I could actually take the same styling and put it inside my container. And if I were to do that and make the background red instead, you'll actually notice that the content is shifting below each other because that's the flow. So, you know, things go below each other as soon as you add more things inside your HTML page. But we're not going to use Flexbox now. We're going to use positioning. And what I want to do is I want to go inside my style sheet and I want to go inside my box and I want to tell it that I want to add a position styling and I want to set this one to static. Now static is actually the default styling that all the elements inside your page has. So whenever you have static set, it's going to just follow the natural flow of the website. So if I were to go back in here, you'll actually notice that nothing changes because it's static and it's just gonna take all the other content into consideration when it comes to moving around and positioning itself around other content. Uh, but if I were to go back in my CSS and change it from static to, for example, something called relative, if we were to go back inside the website, you'll notice that it's not doing anything. But what we can actually do now is we can move this box based on its normal positioning. So right now I can see that the blue box is right here and it's going to stay there even though we start moving it now. But this is where the position of the box is. So it's important to remember that for when we actually start moving it. So if we were to go inside my CSS, I can actually go ahead and say that since we now have a position set, we can now move it to the top right bottom or left side of the screen. So I can, for example, say I want to move it from the left side. Um, so we're pushing away from the left side is how you should look at it. And I want to set this one to 400 pixels. Now, when I do this, the box is going to take its position from where it's right now, and it's going to move 400 pixels to the right side. So if we were to actually refresh, you'll now see the box is over here. But notice something, the red box is still staying where it is. It is not moving up because there's now space for it. And that's because the box, even though visually it's over here, is actually still seen inside the HTML as being over here. And again, you can just go back in here and if you want to move it from the top as well, you can also do that. So you can say top and you could, for example, move it 50 pixels. 
Now, what I could also do is I could actually take it back to the beginning. So I can just say we just want to move it 50 pixels to the right side. And what I can do is I can actually demonstrate something else, which is right now I can see that the boxes are on top of each other. Because again, remember, it's just the visuals that we're moving. So what is happening now is that these boxes are overlapping. And we did talk about something called set index earlier on. So what I could actually do here is I could add another piece of styling inside my box here. I could say it has a set index and set this one to minus 10. And then I could go down and set this other one down here to 10, for example. So the only thing that you should get from this is that one number is lower than the other. So if I were to go back inside my website and refresh it, you can now see that they change position because they're overlapping on the set axis, which is the depth. I just thought I'd demonstrate the set index now that we actually got a chance to do it. So let me just go ahead and remove it again. And what I'll do now is I'll demonstrate something called position absolute. Now position absolute is gonna take your content and totally rip it out of its page and then place it somewhere inside the viewport. So what I could do now is I could say, well, I want it to be on the right side of the browser. So I'm going to go ahead and say on the right side, I want it to be zero pixels or just zero from the right side of the browser and maybe just keep the 50 pixels from the top because I want it to be 50 pixels from the top of the browser. So if we were to save this, you'll notice two things. First is that the box is going to move to the right side but also the red box is gonna shift up again. And this is because we're actually ripping out the blue box from the natural flow of the page. So right now it doesn't actually have a space or slots inside the flow of the page. So we're just taking it out and all the other content are just gonna shift up and just ignore it. Now the issue here though, is if I were to actually take my container, which is the red one, and say that it needs to have a height of 200 view height, which is another way of saying it needs to be twice the height of my current viewport inside the browser. Uh, we can now actually scroll inside the browser because the content is going way below. So if I scroll down, you can see that it's way down there. Uh, but you'll actually notice that the box up here is actually disappearing because I'm scrolling. So it's scrolling out of the page. And what I can do is I can actually go back inside my page and say, well, let's not, let's not have it this tall. So right now we don't want it to be 200 view height, but we're just gonna go ahead and set this one to maybe something like 600 pixels. And the same thing goes for the other one up here. I'm just gonna copy paste 600 pixels inside the container. And what I'll do now is I'll actually go back inside my HTML and I'll put my box inside my container. So right now it's not outside inside the body tag, it's actually inside another container called container. If we were to go inside the website and refresh it, you'll actually notice that it's doing the exact same thing as before. So what I can do is I can actually take this blue box and tell it not to behave according to the viewport, but to the containers inside of. So right now it, it is technically inside the red box, but it's not behaving that way inside the browser. So what you need to do in order to fix that is go inside your CSS. And because right now the container is wrapped around the box element, I can go inside of it add a position to it. And by doing so, we can actually just go ahead and say we want to add a relative styling. And because this now has a positioning, it doesn't matter what kind of positioning, it could be relative or something else. Then right now, these two elements here are actually seeing each other inside the content. So if I were to go back inside my browser, refresh it, you can now see that it's actually noticing, oh, okay, so I am inside another container. So when I tell it to go all the way to the right side using position absolute, it's actually gonna go to the right side of that container and not of the viewport. Now, this will not work if you were to add static instead of relative to the, the parent container. So you will need to add relative in order for this to actually work. And just remember that relative doesn't technically do anything unless you actually add a top, bottom, left or right to the actual styling. So I would actually need to go in and say, well, let's actually go and move it from the right side. Uh, and now you might be thinking something, you know, weird, which is that, well, we can't go to the right side because right now if we were to go inside the browser, we can't move further to the left side. Uh, but if I were to do this, you can actually see, oh, it's actually moving outside my viewport. So you can do that too, just to point it out here. So now with this little example here, I actually want to go back a couple of steps and just kind of go back to where we didn't have the uh, position styling to our parent container, but all the way back to where we had the uh, 200 view height set to my parent container. Uh, I do also want to go back inside my HTML and just kind of go back so we don't have them inside each other, like so. 
And we're back to looking like this now. So now we have the position absolute of my box over here. So it's on the right side. And the parent container is just like really long and stretching below the page so we can actually scroll. So what I can do now is I can go back inside my styling and instead of adding a position absolute, I can add something called fixed. Now adding something called fixed is gonna make it behave in the same way as using position absolute, but it's gonna behave differently when it comes to scrolling inside your website. So if I were to go back inside my browser, refresh it, it's gonna look the same, but when I start scrolling, you're actually gonna notice that the box is fixed to the side of the screen even though I'm scrolling. And this is a very popular way of making the navigation at the top of the website. Because when we start scrolling inside a website, we always need to be able to see the navigation at the top of the screen. So doing it this way is a very popular way of doing so. The last one we have is one called sticky and sticky kind of behaves like a mixture between relative and fixed inside the browser. So what I can do is I can actually go ahead and change this one to sticky. And I can also go ahead and just say that I don't want to have a right position, but I want to have zero pixels from the top, which means that now if I were to actually go inside my HTML document and just add some content before it, we can just add a paragraph and say test inside of it and maybe copy paste it a couple of times, just so we have a little bit of height when it comes to the, uh, the browser. So if I were to actually save this and go inside my browser, refresh it, you can now see that over here on the left side, we do actually have some content. We have some pieces of text at the top, but if we were to start scrolling, it is actually sticking to the top once we can't go up any further with this piece of content. So if we were to go all the way up to the top again, again, we're scrolling down, but this blue box here is actually staying at the top of the website as soon as it gets outside the viewport, which is a really nice little thing. If you want to have some content, let's say a menu further down the page, you start scrolling, but you want the menu to stick to the top. So it's just a really nice way of having content stay when you start scrolling and it's gonna start disappearing out of the view. Then it just kind of like sticks to the top of the browser, just like you would using fixed inside your styling. So now that I've shown you all the different ways you can use position inside your website, let's go back inside the previous example where we did actually start creating an actual navigation at the top of the website. Because right now, if I were to actually start scrolling, the header is gonna start disappearing at the top of the screen and we don't want that to happen. We want this menu to stay at all times. So what I can do is I can go inside my website and I'm gonna go back inside my main CSS file, which is for that particular project. And I'm gonna go down to where we have the header main. As you can see, we have it right here. And I can actually go ahead and set a position at the top here and set it to fixed, which means that now I can tell it where do I want it to be fixed inside the browser. So for example, I could say that I want to have it at the bottom. So we can say bottom zero and then go inside the website. And then you're gonna see it actually moves it down to the bottom. So now we have it all the way down there and that's where the menu is now. So even if I start scrolling inside the website, it's gonna to stick to the bottom of my view. Uh, but we could also do the opposite and say I want to have it at the top of the website and I want it to be fixed to the top of the website. So I can do that. Let's also go ahead and add a set index because just in case that something jumps on top, it's a good idea to have a set index. I'm just gonna set this one to a thousand just to make sure that this one is gonna be at the top always. So when we start scrolling and content starts scrolling behind, it actually goes behind the navigation at the top of the website. So it doesn't for some reason clip outside because that can happen. Um, so what I can do here is I can save it and it's just gonna jump back to the top. But the difference this time is that it's actually staying there even if I start scrolling inside the website. So this is something that we can do in order to, for example, make a header stay. And this is how we can move around content using position. I hope this was very valuable and something that you can use for something fun inside your website. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next video.